in the first episode of KBS's music show Immortal Songs or Purue Myeonggok of the New Year, a classically trained singer from the island nation of Fiji wowed the audience with his powerful baritone voice and impeccable Korean. He won the episode and it was the culmination of a long row that led him to these shores to study classical music more than 10 years ago now. He joins us today for Touch Base and Soul to share his story with us. Mr. Sokol, welcome to the show. Welcome. Uh, oh, sorry, I shouldn't have said welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and Bola Vinaka. Yeah. You are trained as a classical vocalist, as we said. Uh, but the modifier that we always see with your name is the first classical vocalist of Fiji. Is that true? Are you the very first then? Yes. I mean, uh, I will put it out like uh, somebody who has been trained uh, academically and uh, has been, uh, you know, has gone through training with uh, education and has been certified as a classical singer. So I feel like it's uh, it's, it's kind of pressure as well to even <laughs> when, I, when I first heard it because I don't normally think about it, mm. but looking at the at my journey and seeing and, and always looking back in Fiji I feel like yeah it's it's pressure but uh, I'm also uh, I'm thankful for that at yeah, the first but it's true yes it is it's sure. true That's, so yes. if you were the first then how did you come to study classical music well when I was very young I felt like I just wanted to sing Mm. It's not like I wanted to be the next, you know, the classical singer or anything. I just wanted to sing. But looking at my voice, I mean, the sound of my voice, it sounded like, you know, something uh, that would suit well in the classical genre. So, okay, uh, that's how I, I, I tried. Because, like, every time I tried to sing other genres, I felt like uh, my voice was a bit, uh, how do I say, it was more... Uh, it sounded like anybody would have heard my voice sure. when I was young. They would say, oh, I think you should pursue more classical. So it's something that you tried yourself while you were in Fiji. I tried it, but it was it was all about trying just mimicking. Mm. You know, it's just like I have I was not trained or anything. I just tried mm. to whatever I heard. Mm. I tried to follow. But uh, yeah, as I tried it, it seemed like, wow, it felt comfortable. Mm. It, I felt good. And I felt like, oh, at home, I felt like my voice was, was right for that genre. So that's why I, I, I tried classical. Right. You tried classical. You began mimicking it. But then how did you begin training uh, properly for it? Actually, when I came to Korea, mm. when I entered the university, that's when I started. But I understand there's a story of how you came to Korea in the first place yes. as well. There was someone you met in Fiji at the time. Yes. Actually, she was uh, a Korean lady. Uh, she came to Fiji as a missionary. Mm. So when she first came to Fiji, I met her through a friend of mine who was her student. So, you know, she was like, okay, mm, I feel like you have a you have a, a good voice. I mean, you can actually do classical, mm. but uh, let's give time, you know, let's see if uh, you still have the passion for it. Because if I would, uh, you know, see if I can recommend you to Korea... This, it's not an easy thing, you know. You have to learn the Korean language. You have right. to learn the basics of music. And all, it is so many things uh, that you need to consider before coming to Korea. So she recognized your talent mm -hmm. and she had the connections yes. to possibly make this uh, leap over for you yes. to come to Korea and to train properly. Yes, that's true. So that's what she did. Uh, we gave time and we really needed to see that if it was right, uh, the right timing as well. And then, yeah, that uh, that's what happened. Uh, she recommended me to a professor here at uh, here in Korea, at a university in Busan, uh, Koshin uh, University. Uh, it's a small uh, Christian university in Busan. That's where I studied uh, for more than nine years. And when you first started studying, what was it like? Was it different from what you'd imagined? Uh, was there a period of adjustment? Wow. If I have to relieve that moment again, honestly, I was so numb. <laughs> <laughs> I was so numb to the fact that I wanted it so badly. Mm. And uh, everything that came my way that was something that I was facing or was there any difficulties, I felt like this was, was normal for me. But for other students and my friends, it was like, oh, everybody was like trying to complain and all that. Oh, it's so hard. But for mm. me, it was like, well, it's normal. I mean, if I can come from afar and actually... Um, you know, this is part of whatever you do, because not only in music, in whatever we do, there's always, you know, you'll always 
go through difficulties mm. and, and trials. Mm. So I felt like I was so numb to it, the, the fact that I wanted to succeed so badly. Right. But okay. um, yes, I, if, you, if, if, if there were a few things that I had remembered were the language. Mm. Uh, and So the experience of coming and training your, itself. Yes. You were so on board that yes. you perhaps didn't feel the difficulties. Yes. That you were so excited about it. I, but... More excited. I think I was so passionate. Mm about completing the journey. Mm. So, yeah, the language. And also, I'll be very honest, you know, I'm very proud to say this, the fact that when I started off, I didn't even know how to learn uh, to read music, the score. Wow, wow, okay. So I had to juggle up the La Korean language, juggle up reading me, uh, the basics of music. I didn't even know how to play the piano. Mm. I didn't even know the history of music. So I literally... Uh, starting from scratch. I was starting from scratch, but the only thing that I had with me was a passionate heart to sing I wanted to sing and you must have been an adult at the time then I was 23 23 that must be Korean a different age. challenge as yes. well because most uh, classical musicians start from a very young age but you started in earnest for the first time as an adult mm -hmm. that must have been quite the challenge as well well, I feel like uh, in Korea, when I started up the journey as a classical vocalist, or that's when I started training when I was 23. But I started singing when I was in Fiji, when I was seven years old. Right. Okay. I started at a very early age. So it, it was not really classical, but it was singing. Mm. Yeah. So you had uh, the techniques uh, that you had built yourself. So you had a little bit of experience, mm -hmm. but still, I, must have, I imagine it must have been quite a different world, uh, learning classical. Very different. You know... When I uh, sang in Fiji, it was more of uh, how I felt and uh, just basically really actually just training myself, you mm. know, self-trained and all that. And, and people around me and see how they sing as well. Because honestly, people in Fiji, they sing better than me. There's so many young people who can sing better <laughs> than me. Uh, and I'm so proud to say that. And the fact that when I started studying classical music... It was really different because we had to discipline ourselves and mm. it was more about taking care of our voices and how the breath is important when you sing. So it's more like the technique of singing. So it's all about discipline. So that's, you know, when you when I before I start, I studied, it was more free. Like mm. I could just you know, sing however I want. But more classical, it's like it's formatted. It's um, mm. there is a, the rules and techniques that you have to follow while uh, while you're studying but then after that you become you know pro then you start to you know feel sing freely yeah you must have got quite a few questions about you coming to korea to learn classical music yes i'm sure in korea here as well people yes. have asked i'm sure back home in fiji they mm -hmm. might have asked as well what was your reaction to that you know at first i was like uh, you know okay yeah sure but then like you mentioned i I've been asked by so many people, mm. why Korea? You could have gone to Europe, you could have gone to the States, or you you could have gone to, you know, other places. But I felt like, um, yeah, I think, you know, when people are destined for different places, uh, like, I felt like I was destined to come to Korea. Mm. Uh, because even if, when I look back, I feel like if had I gone to another country, I wouldn't have been uh, this successful. And also, I, could, I wouldn't have met the right people. Right. And that was right for me. And I felt like that was just in my, uh, in my journey. It was already, you know, it was just right for me to come to Korea. Right. So it was just fate. Destiny. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, right. Fate. And, uh, but mostly, I, I feel like for me, because I'm more uh, into my faith, mm. I feel like it's God's will for me to be here in Korea. Sure. Yes. So you'd been training in Korea for... Many years, nine years, you said. Yes. Uh, but then in 2020, you took part in another popular television show featuring top male singers. Yes. And that's when you really broke out, it seems. Yes. Can you tell us about what that was like when you first uh, appeared on that show, appearing on TV, getting recognition like that? Uh, so that was like the third season. Mm. So from the first and second season, uh, well, as I was watching it, you know, I was I didn't even think about entering the competition for the first two seasons, but I was more like, wow. I was wowed by the, the amount of, of talent that mm. all of these male dominant singers were, you know, auditioning and and how they would, you know, perform every week and sing new songs every week. And I was mm. like amazed by it. But then by the third uh, season, you know, I felt like uh, since I was in Korea, I've learned a lot. That could be also a learning 
uh, time for me. I didn't take it as a competition. I just took it like something to learn from. Mm. So that's why I I joined the the competition, the Phantom Singer. Yes. You went for the experience, but yes. then you also got quite a bit of exposure, I'm guessing. <laughs> People must have started recognizing you. Yes. Uh, I didn't expect that, actually. Uh, I was more, like I mentioned, uh, I just wanted the experience. I wanted, you know, it's different when you learn in the classroom mm. and it's different when you learn on stage. But And it's also different when you learn uh, this on a big platform, especially on TV. These are all different lessons and mm. I feel like I, I need to learn them before... Uh, as they prepare me for the future, yes. Okay, so in that competition, you yeah. didn't win. But as we said, yeah. starting off the new year in 2022, you won the first competition of the year for Puroe uh, Myung Gok, Immortal yes. Songs on KBS yes. here. What was it like to f- to win that competition? You know, honestly, I um, I came into the program just wanting to... Because because the corona, we didn't perform. There was no gigs or anything. Right, of course. So after that period of time, I felt like I just wanted to let that out. You know, that, that those times of me just doing nothing. So I wanted just to come out and just share what was in me, what, what, what I had and my story and my... Uh, because I'm a musician, that's what I do. I share my talent. I share my voice with people. And uh, I didn't even expect to win. I'll be very honest. Mm. But... Uh, the song that I was preparing was was more uh, what I was focused on, right. like preparing that song. But I didn't think of like, okay, I will sing this song because I want to win. No, I just wanted to sing this song for this time. So it was it, it was really um, overwhelming at the end. I mean, after a few days later, then I started to see when I saw the the trophy. And I was like, <laughs> sure. Wow, I actually won it. But by that before that time, it hadn't aired on on KBS. I knew it, but then every time I look back at it, I'm like, wow, I, I really won. <laughs> it just reminds me that 2022 is going to be a great year. Right. Looking at that trophy, you mm-hmm. must be thinking back all those years yes. of studying here in mm. Korea, making that brave leap to come to yes. Korea as well. Do you feel Korea is your home now? It's my second home. It's your second home. Yes, now. I've spent my whole 20s here. Mm. I mean... I was 23 Korean age, but I was actually turning 21. So when I was 20, I came into Korea. Mm. Uh, when I arrived in Korea, and I'm 30 plus. I don't think I need to tell my age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 30 plus. So I've been here for 30, uh, sorry, for 11 years. Mm. And I've literally spent my 20s here. And, you know, for for a human being, their 20s is very special. That's where the, the, your, you, you decide or it's like a deciding age uh, mm. ga- uh age uh age of development where you become yes an you become adult. Yeah, an adult and mm. that's where you decide who you want to become in the future mm. so spending that in korea i felt like it's it's a very important uh year in my life a period in my life and also developing the talent that i have and preparing me for what i have to do in the future so korea is like a second home to me yes yes as you said you're looking forward to 2022 then what yes. do you have plans now uh Plans, you know, I've, something that I've learned uh, when I started off this year is like, I have no plans, mm. but I'm just ready for whatever is coming my way. Mm. You know, I don't have a specific plan. I want to do this and this and that. I felt like, let me just live life as it as it goes on. You know, whatever comes my way, uh, if it's meant for me, it's going to be mine. Uh, whatever I'm supposed to do, I'm going to do it. When it's not right for me, I don't think I'll be able to do it. But yeah, the plan is to keep challenging myself, um, keep working hard. And uh, yeah, I, I really want to continue to uh, to use my platform to encourage a lot of uh, Fijians, uh, young Fijians, mm. a lot of young Pacific Islanders that uh, there's a big world out here and... You know, we come from a very small island, so sometimes we feel like we're very we're isolated with our dreams and how we want to live our lives. So I hope that my journey continues to inspire a lot of these young people. That yeah, you could be from a very small island, but you can also live your dreams and actually challenge who you are and become a great person. Not only in that small island, mm. in a big in bigger places, if you continue to work hard and and stay focused. I'm sure you have inspired a lot of Fijians, and not just people in Fiji, Mm -hmm. but uh, 
and many other people as well. Well, we'll have to wrap it up there. Congratulations sure. once Thank again you. on winning Pulue Myeonggok. Thank you. We've been speaking to singer Soko for Touch Base in Seoul. It was a great pleasure to chat with you today. Thank you for having me.